Hey guys, Airsoft Tech here, and welcome back. Today we're doing another episode of Airsoft Tech Talk Q&A. So without wasting any more time, let's just jump into your all's most interesting and most popular questions. The Ghost Yaw asks, how do you handle alignment between the gearbox and the hop-up? I have a build that suffers from mid-cap syndrome where the nozzle gets pushed out of alignment with the hop-up and scrapes the ceiling of the chamber. All right, so this question I get uh, relatively often and it has a pretty simple answer. So in M4 style AEGs, you have this version two gearbox shell that sits like so. And especially with upgrade gearbox shells or GMP or VFC gearbox shells, when you install the whole thing, put it all together, sometimes the gearbox shell cants upward and actually kind of causes the air nozzle to not be aligned appropriately in the hop-up chamber, which then causes the air nozzle to rub up against the top. You get misfeeds, you get double feeds, you get jams, you get FPS loss, stuff like that. Now, how do you go about fixing this? Um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you can use really thin plastic or metal shims between the gearbox shell and the back of, or the, and the inside back of the receiver and thread a screw through it that goes from here to there that you know goes into your spring guide. And then by doing so, you can kind of prevent that canting backward motion. Now, recently I've found that uh, electrical tape does really well here too. You basically just take however much shim, shim forward distance that you need, um, put it on the inside rear of the upper or the lower receiver, and then punch a little hole in that electrical tape with the screw, screw to slide through. This way you get a pretty precise uh, way of actually canting the gearbox shell forward. You don't have to use a plastic or metal shim, and um, it's fairly easy. Uh, doing this is something that I do to quite a, quite a bit of my M4 AEGs because a lot of them have a lot of aftermarket upgrade parts that just don't really mesh well together, so I kind of have to make it mesh well together. So that's how you fix that, and it's pretty straightforward. Puha Kex asks, Hi, I run a fully upgraded version 2. Before I install the Aster, everything runs just fine, but with the Aster, my motor gets really hot. I tried reshimming, relubricating, and adjusting or turn off the active braking in the gate control, but it seems nothing helps. I checked my active braking requirements, but also did not help. 18 to 1 ratio, M120 spring, infinite torque up motor in the build. Maybe the motor is the issue. So if your motor is getting extraordinarily hot, it's really probably a couple issues, or the likelihood that it is a couple issues is very high. Obviously, it could be mechanical resistance or excess mechanical resistance. If what you're saying is true and your shimming is perfect and your piston resistance is perfect and your air seal resistance is perfect and pretty much everything there is perfect, um, then move on to electrical resistance. You know, if there's an exposed wire somewhere that's pushed up against a piece of metal, which could cause a short um, or any sort of thing like that, that could also really overheat your motor. Um, and then uh, third is that your motor could be just really bad. Um, and if you want to actually check out some detailed statistics, you can actually use your gate aster with a Bluetooth link to actually see the amp draw, milliamp draw on, on everything there, the, temp the board temperature and everything like that. So um, I'd say honestly, if shimming is not your problem, if the electrical resistance is not your problem, I just try throwing in a, throwing in a different motor real quick and seeing what happens. Um, sometimes ASG motors tend to have flukes here and there. Um, here recently, I've not been the biggest fan of ASG motors, um, re really recently being the past about two or three years, because they do have more lemons than what I'm willing to risk when I'm paying $60 for a motor. So again, if shimming is not your problem, if air seal is not your problem, if uh, piston resistance is not your problem, if no mechanical force is present that's causing excess resistance, or any electrical force is present other than your motor that's causing excess resistance, then it could be just your motor and try swapping it out and seeing what happens. Um, in addition to that, actually, I just now thought of this, it could also be an inadequate battery. Sometimes very uh, low powered batteries starve the motor and in effect heat the motor up to a point where um, it gets really hot like you're talking about. So that's a possibility. Um, just check into all those things and if nothing solves your problem, um, I would try swapping the motor. Paragon Armory asks, what are your thoughts on low TPA slash high ratio gears versus high TPA slash low ratio gear setups? 
So I like extremely high efficiency. I don't like these builds that just drain my battery power, heat up my motor, and uh, make my whole gun less reliable. So I really like highly efficient systems. That being said, I really like the high TPA with low ratio gears pairing. And I have for a very long time, pretty much ever since I you know, paired the two together initially eight, eight or nine years ago, um, I've liked it, uh, liked builds like that. So. That being said, there's definitely a place, I guess, for low TPA, high, uh, low ratio gears to, to create that super awesome speed build. Um, but I feel like a lot of times the same can be accomplished with high TPA and low ratio gears. Now, in the situation where you have um, high ratio gears and a low TPA motor, I think that those situations have almost no application because pretty much you can get the same torque output if you reverse those two with a you know, high TPA motor and mid ratio or low ratio gears, you can get some really high efficiency, you can get some highly predictable uh, gear train motion, so you're not gonna have this ridiculous overspin like a low TPA motor would cause. So that's where I fall on that comparison. Andrew Parasoto asks, is there an estimated FPS drop per tooth when short stroking, say an SSG, or is it just kind of a guessing game? So given that your uh, air compression ratio is about cylinder to barrel is 1.8 to 1 or so, um, you should expect about a 15 to 20 FPS drop per tooth that you short stroke. Um, that's exactly what I got when I short stroked a gun recently, was almost exactly 20 FPS per tooth on, these, on this platform that had a uh, appropriate air volume ratio. So um, some people will say as high as 30. I saw that in one of the comments. Um, some people will say as low as five or 10. Um, I've really never seen anything less than 10. And in those setups, you have a very uh, high ratio for air compression. So, um, but on average, about 15 to 20 has been my experience on an appropriately volume setup. And if you're building a gun for close quarters for which you need to short stroke, that should probably be your goal. All right, guys, that's going to do it for questions today. If you have a disagreement with any of my answers, please drop it down below and let me know. I like to hear differing opinions. And if I didn't get around to answering your question or another question that you had interest in, uh, please remember that I try to pick the most highly upvoted questions and also the ones I find the most interesting. That way I give you know some questions, get some questions from you guys that are you know the most popular, and then I also get to pick some questions that I personally find interesting. But that's going to have to do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please like this video, comment down below, tell me what your thoughts are on any of my answers. Please, I like to hear differing opinions. And then also sub subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Airsoft Tech themed content. All right, I will see you guys in the next video of whatever the heck I'm doing. But until then, stay tuned, techs.